Hello and welcome back to Combine and Conquer. We last took a look at this game in version 0.4 over a year ago. Oops. Sorry, Martin. Uh, it is being developed by uh, Martin Buck, and uh, it has gone through a lot of changes in that last year. Uh, we are now on version 0.8. And it is almost a completely different game than when I played it before in terms of a lot of the gameplay functionality, functionality at least from what I've gathered as I followed along with the patch notes and um, release commentary and things like that. So we're just going to go back into this and take a look at what's new and different and give it a good playthrough again, um, just to kind of explore it a bit. Um, there's... there's uh, there's a lot going on in this game that we never got to in the past, uh, traveling to other planets, things like that. So I would like to try to get to that point at least, as uh, at least if we can uh, this time around. Uh, 0.8 did just release in the last few days, so it should hopefully persist for us a while. And he also has committed to trying not to break saves going from version to version from this point forward. So we can uh, hopefully, you know, if it takes us a while, we can hopefully still get there. This game is a factory builder game, but as I mentioned, you can also travel to other planets and other, you know, celestial bodies here. There's Jeff Moon. Uh, we're here on Planet Hope. There's Wally Moon here. Yes, there's a Wally Moon here, and I'm assuming that's Call Me Jeff in that Jeff Moon there. Uh, there's a Toasty Planet here and a uh, little Toasty Moon over there. And then, let's see, uh, we have a planet over here, the Droplet. And we have another planet over here, Rocky. So uh, we will, um, of course, we have to, we start here on Hope, and we can see what we what we can do. So the tutorial will guide us through a lot of our stuff. And if you recall, in the last time we looked at this, there really wasn't much of a tutorial in the game. It was provided via uh, the web a website, and it has since been included in in the uh, um, in in the game itself, which. It's really handy and useful to have here. So let's zoom in here on this land, and we can see that at some point here, the resources start popping up. And we have four different resources, and the, the tutorial tells us we need to try to place something to where we are in range of all four resources. Um, I'd like to have a nice chunk of coal nearby, or a few chunks of coal, perhaps. And it looks like that's a good place. And then we have, um, uh, down here on the bottom, we have a bunch of different things we can place. Uh, belts, um, arms, Processing, which includes um, assemblers and furnace burners. We have a miner. We have uh, some 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 a source and a sink that work as chests. And I think that's more for uh, building in the modules, which we'll get to. We have here um, burners for energy. We have space stuff that we haven't gotten to yet, and then we have special stuff, including influencer. Uh, or influence spreader, I guess, technically. Uh, a chest, a provider, a lab, and the starter, which is the building we need to start with here. So the starter has a fairly large range on it, and we're going to want to make sure that we're within range of at least the four, at least a little bit of each of the four resources. So I think I'm going to put the starter down, uh, let's see, maybe, uh, maybe right in here someplace. I'd like to put it over there a little bit more, but I think I shouldn't. So we're going to put it over here instead. And we will do it right there, maybe. All right, so now we need to place two miners, one for coal and one for iron. Iron, jeez. A miner extracts resources in its range to then be used by your factory. So let's go to the miners uh, that's here and here. And we can do that, and we can do that. Place two arms taking coal and iron. So we'll do that next. Those are, uh, those are here. So the arms, and he's also updated to higher res graphics at some point along the way. I don't remember if that was six or seven, but there's a lot more, uh, a lot better looking um, uh, buildings and things here uh, than they were in the original uh, version of the game and the version the last we last played, 0.4. Place 10 belts moving five coal and five iron. Place 10 belts to move both coal and iron dropped by the arms. Place them in such a way that iron and coal get moved close to each other. Well, I don't want to do that. I don't remember how to delete. I guess I don't need to delete. I can just do... Can I just turn? Yes, I can. Okay, good. Uh, 
Okay, there's coal and iron. I don't remember how exactly we're going to do this, but we're going to do it some way. So that's it. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's enough belts. Ah, oh, there we go. Place a furnace somewhere near the iron and coal so you'll be able to feed both into it. And that's where this is going to be. Yeah, because we don't have long ins inserters yet, so we're just going to have to do this uh, the old-fashioned way to start with. And then use belts and arms to feed both coal and iron ore into the furnace. So we'll do arms here and there, and that'll do. And then we need to move at least 10 iron plates out of it, so we can do that here as well. And we will do the belts. There should be plenty of room to get to 10 going. Uh, so the furnace has... Um, there's the remove button. So clear. Remove all, all items contained within the structure. Okay. Enabled, influence present, smelt speed is 500. Total smelt time is 3 seconds, 200 milliseconds. 3.2 seconds. And I don't think there was music uh, the last time I played either. So now we have music in the game. So the belts tick one position every 320 milliseconds. Yes, and there's five positions on a belt. So five times 320 is 1,600, 1.6 seconds uh, per block, per tile kind of thing. Place an assembler near the produced iron plates since you'll need them for the items you're about to craft. Okay, we'll do this one here. And then we can set the recipe. Click on the assembler you place to open its configuration dialog and set its recipe to gear. There it is. It's processing. I guess it makes sense. Use arms and belts to feed iron plates into it. Also use arms and belts to grab the produced gears. Make five gears this way. So we'll input these, and I'll put those. Oop, a belt. There was a way to, that is it, right-click to clone. I remember there being a thing about how many tiles, yeah, four of nine tiles are in its area. And that depends on that, that, uh, oh yes, cooldown base, CDB, 36 seconds, 864 milliseconds. But because we have four, uh, it processes them four times faster, or produces them four times faster. So the cooldown is effectively CDE, nine seconds and 216 milliseconds, 576 ticks. And here we have five tiles, so there's more being produced. Place another assembler, such as close to the produced gears and iron plates. I was hoping for that. That'll go here. Set the new assembler's recipe to belt. And produce five belts this way. Go there. Go there, and then we're going to do this. And then I would like to probably delete that one if I can figure out how to do it. That's probably just how we do it there. I could rotate it like that, and then I would use those uh, so they didn't waste them. Because I don't like to waste things. Uh, and then an outserter here, and we can do this. One, two, three. Place the provider near where you produce the belts since you'll need them in the next step. Yeah, so we need to actually shorten this by quite a bit. Uh, delete. Delete. Provider. That's here? Yep, there it is. And I'm going to want to do that, and then we'll do this and that and another arm here. I would have probably just put them right into the provider, but it wanted me to do the, the belts, so I did it. So, have 80 belts in the planet's inventory. Use belts and arms to place the produced belts into the provider. Any structure placed into the provider becomes part of your planet's inventory. 
excuse me, for future placement. Note that you can set a limit to providers to avoid processing a structure too many times. So we can set a limit, and let's say we wanted to have maybe most 200 belts. So we can set that, and I believe that's global, I believe. There must be another delete button too. Is it just delete? Yeah, it's just delete. Although I should have just yeah, done that. Okay, there we go. Uh, iron is going a bit slow now. We're going to need to eventually produce more of it. But we're going to need to have another way of getting some more iron or here. The music's getting louder. Is there, um... Yeah. Let's go with that. Probably a little bit less of the sound effects, too. There we go. All right, so I think we need to do something to uh, scale this a bit. Uh, one of the things we can do is um, put down some more coal. That way we can produce a little bit more here. Uh, this one will give us seven tiles. So now we're producing a lot more, um, but we needed more coal to get this thing going a bit faster. I like how they light up when they're processing. That's kind of nice. And eventually we'll need to have more assemblers doing this production work. But I didn't really lay that, lay that out well for this. But we could probably do some moving of things. Can I move things? I think I can... I don't think I can move them. Copy, delete, clear, turn on, turn off. Yeah. Doesn't look like I can move them. How do I unselect? Yeah, I can just clone things. Until we have more belt uh, variants, there's not a whole lot I can do about that, I don't think. What are we at for the planet's inventory? Well, tell me how many belts we have. Nine. Yeah, because I built a lot. Okay, so we're going to have to do something about this. Uh, first of all, let's double this as well. So we're going to definitely need more. Like that. Because um, this, this can definitely handle more. And then I think we need to do some creativity. Yay, creativity. Oh, wait. Uh, let's do maybe a couple, or one of these down here at least. One of them over there. Although, this is going to use a lot of belts. So I don't want to do that either. And even then, I should have... So how do I unselect? Oh, I know how I unselect things. All right, stop, Polly. Cancel. Unselect. There we go. Okay, there we go. There's ten of those left here. And then there are... No, there's 61 belts. Oh, I have nine providers available. Right. That's interesting. That's kind of a weird way to write to write that, I think. But I have nine providers available. I have sixty-four belts now. Alright, this will be okay. We can we can we can live with this. We have over here. Selection mode set. Render settings. Progress. Influence. Minor range. That's the influence thing that we looked at earlier. The range of that. Status overlay. Okay, that's like game stats, like save game stats or game performance stats. Toggling full screen. Ooh, that's interesting. A little progress indicator here on structures. I don't necessarily like it on the belts, but um, I, I like it on the... Uh, we did that already. I like it on the machines, but... Yeah, let's um, delete that, delete that, one of these over there. And providers you can remove. Uh, they don't actually hold anything, so you don't have to um, uh, deal with deal with an inventory in them. They simply just um, transport things into the ether, basically. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. We could do... How do I want to handle this? I... I guess we could still do this. I just... Don't necessarily want... To use up a bunch of belts, given how close we are. Oh, we just finished it. Great, you fully, you just fully automated the production of belts. Now repeat the previous steps also to produce arms for future placement. Okay, so now I want to go sick on the belts. Let's do this and this, and then let's do belt. And I want you to come to somewhere in the vicinity of this. Let's do that. Like so. That and then this will connect up like this. I think that'll work. I think that connects in this game. I can't remember actually. And then we need to have this and that and this. And I don't actually know why I'm putting these on the edges because that doesn't actually make sense. It's better to have them in the middle. So maybe I move. Go ahead and process that one and then I will steal it. It's better to move them over here like this. Put that down, delete these. Take these like this, and yeah, they will. Um, they will do what I, do it as I thought there. And let's move this one in by one as well. There we go. And that way they're covering nine instead of covering less than nine, and that makes them a little bit more efficient as well. So now the processing effective cooldown is 256. And the cooldown on this is 200. So one of these and one of these can provide just barely more than enough for one of these. Or barely less than enough. Mm -hmm. All right, and then those will feed in there and that means we'll have a bit more iron going into this. So now we need to do um, arms. So I'm going to clone this, put it there, and then we'll set the recipe to arms. And then this needs iron gears and iron plates so we can keep going with these belts like this and these belts like this. And insert here, there, and there. And that will put these into the same provider, but that's fine because providers don't actually have any inventory. Although I'm not sure how that works with the item limit. Interesting. I'm not sure how that's going to work. Okay, and then we're going to get in the same situation because we're produ not producing enough iron because we have limitations on the way things are spaced out. But we could do some more down here. Maybe I should. Uh, let's put one in right there. Let's put another one in right here. And then let's do a... Uh, just do it this way. Copy one of these. Um, I'll go ahead and put this there. And then we can just do arms like this, like this, and like that. And a belt can go right here because you've got to have a belt to have a place to grab from. And then this can go and meet up there too. There you go. So until we get better advanced or more advanced uh, belt types, it's kind of a tough thing to, you know, without undergrounds and things, it's kind of a tough thing to do um, uh, really good automation. So instead we have this kind of hackneyed auto automation here, uh, but we could do a little bit more. We could do one here and one there. And do this here like that. Oh, that's kind of good. Uh, that one can go there. This one can go here. This one can come out. And then we can take the belt in like this. And that'll work out well as well. You can kind of keep doing the same kind of thing here, just laying them out on this area and then just running the belts in weird ways to get them 
together. There was a way that I figured out uh, before on how to do this, and I think you have to basically just do like a diagonal line right along the seam between the iron and the copper, or the whatever in the copper, coal. Iron in the coal, or whatever in the coal, to get things to work out correctly. Uh, so we need 35 arms in the planet's inventory, and I keep using them. So I'm going to stop using them now, because we should be producing a bit more iron, and we might actually get them produced reasonably. Um, how many belts do we have in the inventory now? 57. We could stop making belts um, in order to make more um, arms, but I think it's okay. Can I do my influence range here again? I could sneak some of that as well. And I'm probably going to need more, more belts, or more gears rather, made. And so what I'm going to do for that is just direct insert them here. And that means that you won't need to come all the way down here. Because why bother with... Um, actually, we can just do away with this entirely. Timing. There we go. And just direct insert them instead of doing it like this. And that'll work out better anyway. There we go. And the arm swing every 128, it says. But if I remember correctly, that's for the half swing. Mm. Yeah, because these aren't keeping up with this. And this needs one item every 200 seconds. One of each every 200, sec 200 ticks. And this is only... And this is pausing... Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so it must be 128 for each half swing. Like each arc is 128. So we're back on kind of the 256 number again. And that kind of makes sense because the miners are producing every 256 and they're not building up in there. They're it this is grabbing just as soon as it's ready. So that's really good timing on those two. I should push these back though now. And put it like back into here. That way we can just do the same thing we've been doing uh, with the rest of it. Same thing with you. You can come back in here. And we will delete these. Like that. Nope. No. Oh. Okay, there we go. That'll make things a little bit uh, better too, I hope. Where are we at with arms now? 30. Okay, five more to go. Not bad. But the uh, iron belt is full, which is really good. That's what we were kind of hoping for. In terms of these five furnaces are producing more than we need. Um all of this because uh, you need one iron plate every 256 you need one iron plate and one gear every 256 so that's uh two iron plates every 256 this makes three four because there's two there every 512 so that's still three every 256 and then here there's uh one every 256. So that's four every 256, and we're making five. 
So actually, we should be backing up, and we actually are. Place the burner in such a way that you can feed coal into it. You'll burn coal in it to produce energy. Okay. Let's do this, that, and uh, that. Sure. Then we need a miner here and an arm mist here. And that should burn coal. Um, coal is burned. Doesn't entirely say. We also don't necessarily need. Yeah, it doesn't say how long it takes. It probably depends on how much is actually being used, but. Base and feed enough burners such that you can produce a total of 700 energy. So that's seven of those. Uh, so we're going to want to do. This is where I could stagger them. I could do something like this. Actually, I should have done it. A little bit differently, maybe. You can do that one. This one. Oops. There. That's 300. There's an indicator somewhere of how much energy you have. Right here. Okay, we've already done it, because we already had some being produced by the, by the base. Place an influence structure. That's here. An influence structure. Extend the influence range in which your structures have access to power. Now that, that the starter already has a very large influence range, and yes it does, so we can see that the influence here will um, be, what, about three? I'm going to just put down three of them, just so I can see, yes. it will be th three of these to make up one dimension of, or one side of the base. Make ten RTs, that's research tokens, they're required for unlocking new technologies. Alright, so we need to make... We have the lab there, but the research tokens, I think, are made here at an assembler. Oops. Click on that, and then those are here? Yeah, there they are. RT1. Those need gears and iron plates. Every 256, they need one of each, so this will be a fairly simple build to do. I'm going to put down one of these here. I'm going to uh, move this up here, and then we can do the same thing we've done all the time here. You go in there, you go in there, you go in there. And then we want to... Uh, we're going to want to um, put those on a belt in this case because they're going to be taken to a lab to do research. So let's do this and uh, one of these again, like that. And that way we can take them to the lab once we have ten of them. Uh, we don't need that many belts, though, do we? Let's do just that many belts. That's better. So these produce one every 256. And by the way, each thing we built so far has been consuming energy. That's literally spelled out as NRG. Um, and that's because the, um, the starter produces 500 energy. Place a lab near where you produce the RTs. That'll be here. And we put that in there. Uh, one more of these, just for fun. And then we'll do this. And then the lab will take those. And then research the technology crossings. For this, select it in the research view and make sure to feed the RT. Make sure to feed the RT you're producing in with the arms into the lab. Speed up research by using multiple labs, but you have to make them first. Crossings, right here. Unlocks Mark 1 Crossing, which allows for the creation of belt intersections. Let's do it. And we're going to need more of these, and we don't have any more. So we're going to have to make them. And in order to make them, we need an assembler to make them in, I'm assuming. Oops. There. There. Uh, this will take... 2048, and it needs chips and wires. So we don't know how to make chips and wires yet, so we probably should just wait on that. But obviously they take iron and copper because of the uh, yellow numbers there. Did we finish that technology? No, not yet. You process one every 1,000, and we're producing one every 256. So we could easily handle four labs with what we're producing right now. But it's okay, because if we um, 
if we produce too much more, we wouldn't have enough iron coming in. So it's okay the way that it is. And here we are on oh, solar brightness. Here we're five out of a hundred. Ouch. Surprise only gives us one lab, but yeah. Um, Cause yeah, we don't have any items to make that with. So we'd have to figure out wires and chips. I'm assuming, well, I shouldn't assume, but let's let's just take a quick note here or quick look here. Um, wires and chips. There's wire. Wire is copper, which means we need to make sure making copper plate. And chips are more wire and more and iron plate, and that's where it's going to get a little bit complicated. Because until we have crossings and things, we are going to have to um, be a little squirrely with this. Hmm. How do I want to handle that? Let's see, we could smelt a little bit of copper down here. Hmm. Got to be careful, though, to make sure that I can get it out of there. That's the big trouble without crossings. I feel... I feel like I'm overly... I don't know, thick about doing some of this stuff. Like I, that, I'm I'm not getting the easier an easier way to do um, to do the placement of these so that you can use them more reliably. Having to mine everything, like in Factorio, you have. An avatar so you can go and mine the things by hand and feed them into the smelters by hand but here you have to actually feed everything in automated and that's a real big challenge before you have all these belt components that you kind of need to have in order to make everything work properly Oh, I have an idea. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but I have an idea. Okay, so we'll do this, and we'll do this. And then I want to put another one in here. Oh, I, can't, I don't have enough. Okay, well, then that, that settles it. Uh, we can't do more than that much copper. Uh, that makes my life easier. Let's feed you in here and feed you in there. And then we will take this out. Oh, I'm outside the influence range. Oh, uh, let's move one of those influencers because we don't really need them over here like we have them. Let's move one of them down here. Just like that. And then you can go here. And then belt can go this way. Uh, but I don't know exactly to where yet. And then we need to take some of this iron and make some more of them labs. So let's make some wire uh, from the copper. And then we'll make some... Um, We'll make some chips with some of the, the iron plate. We need another 256 iron, or one, one iron plate every 256 again. So we'll do that here. Which means that I'm pretty close to using up all my, actually I think I might be overusing all my iron. And then we need to have a couple of assemblers making wire, I think. Because uh, you're going to need one wire every 256. And you will make two wire every 512 
No, two wire, yeah, two wire every five twelve, so one every two fifty six, and you need one every two fifty six. So that's one to one there, and then we also need a. Um, we also need to make wire and chips into a lab. So we need to take this and make a lab here. And you're going to need very few, right? Right. You need eight iron plate, or sorry, eight chips every 2048, which is exactly correct for the chip recipe. And you also will need uh, four wire every 2048, which is way less than what we're going to produce with one of these. So we need one more of these, though. Put it there, and then I'll need to do another influence thingy over here. Um, I don't know where I want to put it, though. Maybe we'll just do like this, like that, and then delete that one. I don't really need the ones I have over there either. And then that way we can do this like this. Uh, we can do a belt here. And that'll connect up to that. And then we'll, we can do arms. There, 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 and there. And then you will go into a provider. Okay, just gotta get the copper up here. I think that'll handle it. This isn't producing very much, but then again, we don't need a whole lot either for this. We're running low on power, on hope. All right, well, let's put down another miner. We don't have the miners, right? We don't have the miners. All right. That's, I'm glad that I simplified this so that I have one miner per furnace uh, and have them in the denser areas now. Yeah, still don't really know what that item limit means. I guess that means that it'll only take 200 of each belts and arms, which kind of makes sense. Yeah, 200 per item. So I guess that's what it means. Just interesting. Like, if I put another one down. Is that saying that every item that I put into a provider is going to be limited to 200 per item now? No, that one's... Oh, because I took that one fresh. Right, that one was a copy. So if I were putting inserters into here and I set this limit to 100, or belt into here, and I set this limit to 100, does that mean that this one would only accept 100 belts, but this one would accept 200? Which would be a way to do like priority production, I guess. It's interesting. I hadn't thought about how that might work, but I think that makes sense as to how this would work. And so since this is just labs though, maybe we want just like five of them for now. Because we don't need to make a crap ton of these. We'll need more eventually, but we don't need a crap ton right now. We need like four, right? Was it four? 256, yeah. 1024. Yeah. Low in power, I know. It's fine. We're close enough. We're doing good. We're doing good. These things take forever to run. 32 seconds. There it goes. And so I think I'm just going to put these next to each other. Put that down and then do this. Oh yeah, we have 200 belts already. Only 123. Uh, yeah, now we're exactly 800. So we are maxed out on power right now. And so in order to do any more, we would need to make miners. So belts have stopped. And they have indeed. This will not take any more belts here. You're still making whatever the machine will hold in itself. Which looks like it's done now as well. Maybe just one recipe or something. And then we're done. So we could continue, though, looking at other recipes. Things like miners. Uh, whether this wants us to do that or not, I don't know. Um, I have 
I made a few. Oh, I made some already. Okay, well, pay attention, Wally. There we go. Four of those should be good. And then... If we wanted to make things like... Yeah, I'm, I'm overpowered now. I'm, at, I'm using 900 out of 800. More miners. Uh, how would I do that? Well, we would use... Screws. Which are made from iron plates. So we could do that. Um, screws are probably here in this one? No. It's in this one probably. Yes, there it is. So you produce one screw every 256. And you need four screws every 1024. Perfect. Love it when a plan comes together. Okay, so this will go... Here. This will go... Here. These can come... No, actually, they don't need to come down. Uh, this can go into there. This can go into there. And then we can go out into a provider that I'm going to set to... Probably not 200, but also not 5. Maybe, like, 20. Okay. That should do. And then once we have that, we can actually produce a little bit more power. We have 17 more of these. So once we have the more, more miners, we can produce more power. Until then... We're also almost out of assembler, so that's going to be a problem soon as well. Wait, do you also? No, it's yellow, so you don't also need iron plate. That's just the secondary, right? There we go. A miner already. Just a minor inconvenience. We can go there. We'll do one of these right here and an arm right there. These would be really good placed like this, give or take that, you know, for not being on the or being on the edge and like getting six, but it'd be a really good place like this, because then you could just stagger them like that. Alright, we need just a shade more power, and I don't have room right here, right here. But if I would have moved this up, then I would have had. Yep, because that's how I roll. Uh let's see. Let's just do this one. And this one, and that one, and that'll be fine. That'll give us just a bit more power than we need. Uh, where are we at with the technology here? 78, 79, just about to 100, and then we can actually have crossings. And then that means that we can rebuild this, uh, especially the smelting component, much, much better. I know, we're running low on power. We could do a little bit more power, I suppose. Do that. So one is definitely producing more than one burner needs. I just wish I knew how long it took to burn the fuel. And whether it's dependent upon power usage or if it's a constant burn rate. Uh, smelt speed is 100. Does that mean it takes five times longer to burn through? So is that a thousand then? Compared to this being a 500, being smelt speed 500 and being 200 um, ticks. Does that mean that this is a thousand ticks? Which means that one of these could feed four of those. Almost. Uh, the next thing is modules. Create a module that produces belts. But we're going to save that for the next time, I think. Uh, we're going to um, hopefully experiment with those crossings a bit, which I believe uh, will take something in from top to bottom and pass it through. And take something in from left to right and pass it through without mixing the two. If I remember correctly, and that's the thing we want, because that will let us do a lot more uh, of a smelting column. But we'll take a look at that in the next episode as well. So thank you all for joining me, and I will see you all then. Bye for now.